peacefully moving on after a separation and intuitively creating a successful business is something that I help my clients with. But I also needed to do this for myself. So in this video, I will talk to you about the three things that I prioritized throughout my healing journey as I healed from a separation while still running an online business that required me to do videos like this and be visible and put myself out there, even though it was the last thing that I wanted to do. The first and one of the most important things that I got to do for myself and prioritize was the belief that I had for and with myself, right? And this is super crucial, right? Because if we don't believe in ourselves, who will? So being able to cultivate belief in myself each and every day and improve on it every single day was something that I prioritized. And how did I do this? I didn't do something big per day, didn't expect myself to do anything too big per day, especially there were times when really like I felt paralyzed, right? Didn't want to get out of bed, uh, that type of paralysis at times. Um, But what I did was that Every day I did something that I said I was going to do and I followed through it no matter what it was. And for some days, it could just be the fact that I got out of bed and put some clothes on and brushed my teeth, right? I said that I was going to do those things, so I followed through those things. And this wasn't just in terms of, you know, personal self-care. It was also in my business, right? Because I was, you know, fairly visible as well. I was putting myself out there. And there were times where the only energy that I could muster up was maybe a post of three sentences, or maybe just a picture in my stories, or maybe just even talking to one of my colleagues who I'm in business with, something small that I did per day that I said I was going to do. And this over time, little bit by little bit, tiny changes at a time, started helping me to believe in myself more. Because the reason why we lack trust in ourselves is because we don't follow through the things uh, that we said we were going to do, right? We break our own promises. So knowing this, I really made sure that I stopped breaking my promises to myself. Now, were there times that I actually broke my promise? Yes. Sometimes it was because I just couldn't. And sometimes I maybe overexerted myself, right? And sometimes I just was being a brat and didn't want to do it, right? But at the same time, whatever the reasons were, I still continue to get up every single day to prove to myself that I have my own back. So This is the most important thing, because if we don't believe in ourselves, that is the blueprint that we carry out our thoughts and and feelings and our actions. Right. What however much we believe in ourselves, our capacity to believe in ourselves and our resiliency and our strength and our ability to keep moving forward, our belief in ourselves and how badass we are, our belief in ourselves to really believe that we are intelligent human beings and we can figure things out that really affects what we do moving forward that affects opportunities that we manifest, that affects our ability to actually heal those wounds and look at ourselves in the mirror and trust that we will still have our back despite the imperfections and despite the things that we have allowed to happen to us, right? Um, They don't really happen to us, they happen for us, right? So being able to cultivate that belief in myself and still really, even though it was really hard at times, look at myself and my imperfections in the mirror and be okay with it, accept it. And it was very, very, very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable to not be critical regarding your mistakes and your flaws, right? But it is through this practice, it is through this compassion as well that also helped me believe in myself. And it is through all of these actions that I remind my clients to to do for themselves, right? Um, we all know this logically. You are listening to this probably, and you're like, "Yeah, that right. That's right. That's ma- that's making a lot of sense." But are you actually walking this talk, right? So, believe in yourself. You are your best bet. You are the only one who is going to support you. It's no one else's job to support you, 
only you. So believe in yourself. And this was the biggest game changer because the rest of the other two became easier to do once I believed in myself. Number two was that I coached myself and found the best way as to how to coach myself. And our self-talk is very, very important, right? So it was during this time where I really became aware of how I was talking to myself. Now, you know, as someone who has perfectionistic tendencies, this was very difficult, right? The all or nothing mentality, the type A type personality was very um, difficult to manage during this time because, you know, it's so easy to just want to be there right now just to feel better. But the best thing that we can do for ourselves that also creates that self-belief is to be able to guide ourselves uh, whenever we wobble, guide ourselves whenever we um, we tumble or we make mistakes. And this was something that I learned and had to be really aware of because when, you know, when I didn't follow through on what I said I was going to do, um, for a bit of time, I was beating myself up more, right? I was, oops, oops, <laughs> I apologize. I was kind of calling myself an idiot for not following through, right? Fritz, you know better saying those things, but were those, were, th were those types of thoughts and that self-talk helping me? No, it was not, right? Um, beating ourselves up, giving ourselves more problems to solve isn't really the best for us. So it was really just being able to stop and become aware when I was starting to go through those self-sabotage patterns uh, that I, you know, be, once I became aware of them, then I was able to then make a choice as to how I was going to talk to myself moving forward. And obviously this tip took a lot of work. This is the real work, right? This is the real inner work, being able to coach yourself and being able to give yourself compassion instead. And truth of the matter is there were many times where I wasn't even aware that I was doing it. I was doing it unconsciously. And it was also during this time that I made sure that I invested in someone helping me to rewire my subconscious patterns right without any of those um rewiring sessions from you know my colleagues who are trained in the same modality as me I don't know if I would be here right I would probably still be a big fucking mess so it's by being able to just invest in myself because I believed in myself and being able to learn how to coach myself through experiencing a modality that really just get to the root cause of why I was critical, why I had perfectionistic, why I had codependent tendencies, and being able to see myself in that fashion imperfectly. And even though I saw my imperfections, even though I didn't like what I saw, still being able to look at me myself and say, well, that made sense. It is valid why you feel that way. It is valid why you acted that way. It is. It makes sense as to why you chose this instead of that. But now moving forward that didn't help you so stop doing that shit right it's just being aware more aware and cultivating that relationship with yourself to be able to not just give yourself compassion but also to give yourself a pep talk because sometimes that's what we need right sometimes we need a pep talk to get our head out of our ass and to keep moving forward so being that person to myself first and guess what I became a much better coach after this right because if you're able to coach yourself you are going to be a much more effective coach for your clients because then you're going to be able to see them objectively you're going to be able to see them and you can because you've shifted it yourself you'll know how to best shift them at an even faster rate than you did when you're able to coach yourself so this was something that I knew intellectually but being able to do this was was challenging but it actually became such a wonderful skill to have because then I get to help my clients with this too, right? So coaching myself, absolutely A plus, 100% recommend. The third and just as equally important skill, like the other two, was the fact that I allowed myself to just feel my damn emotions. And I know you don't want to do this. <laughs> me neither, girl. Me too. Um, you know, feeling your emotions is very uncomfortable, right? Feeling all those feelings, being in tune with them, being in touch with them, being present with them is a challenge. Um, 
I know because I've developed this mechanism that really started in nursing when I was a nurse, right? Uh, I used to work in the emergency department. And so there would be something traumatizing at like half an hour into your shift and you had 11 and a half shifts left. So, you know, like you stuff that shit in, right? Because there's just no time to process. And so that was the coping mechanism that I, I learned to have, right? It's just by stuffing the emotions down and keep going. But really after burning out as a nurse, uh, I saw the big limitations of that. It was helpful at that time, but the limitations were huge. So feeling my emotions for me was completely new. It was completely unfamiliar. The amount of intensity in which to, to I felt my emotions were um, very scary at first because it was just unfamiliar. I was not used to it. But over time, I actually, it's not like I enjoy it, right? I don't enjoy feeling distressing emotions, but I'm able to uh, sit with it uh, more and I'm allowing myself to shift faster because I have cultivated that skill set of just sitting with the discomfort. And the more you are able to sit with the discomfort, how do you think that will change not just your healing journey from this, but like your business, right? You're always consistently getting out of your comfort zone in your business. So if you're able to learn how to sit with your emotions, the uncomfortable ones, that transfers over as well to the discomfort that you feel in your business, because how we do one thing is how we do everything, right? So by creating this skill of um, of allowing myself to feel my emotions without numbing them, without avoiding them, without stuffing them down and pretending they ain't there. Um, this skill has actually been the most, um, the most, the best one, and the the one that has been the most fulfilling to actually have because um, my ability to feel my emotions now uh, is so it's is is a lot more effortless and when. The, the thing that we do is that when we when we stop ourselves from feeling emotions, when we avoid or numb our emotions, uh, we may think that we're only doing it uh, to the distressing emotions, but it, which is helpful. Um, you know, if you stuff your distressing emotions down and ignore them, you're temporarily not going to feel them. They're going to keep coming up anyway. But just because we, but because of the fact that we stuff those emotions down, we can't really pinprick as humans. We can't pinprick which emotions we stuff, right? If we stuff an emotion down, we stuff all of them down. Um, it's like anesthesia, right? General anesthesia just numbs you the whole way. Um, and it's the same with numbing our emotions. When we numb our distressing emotions, we also numb the pleasant emotions. So by being able to feel my emotions, yes, they were distressing. Yes, I had panic attacks in parking lots. That was a thing. Um, but it really just helped me um, gain that skill of emotional regulation and allow myself to work with my emotions. Because when I was, I, and I didn't know this at that time, right? I just felt those emotions because they told me to, because I knew that it was good for me. But the byproduct of feeling those negative emotions is that my ability to feel love, my ability to feel happiness, my ability to feel grateful is just much more profound because of the ability for me to really dig deep into the sadness and the grief as well. Being able to feel like gratitude and fulfillment just is another le level layer, much more profound and fulfilling and impactful because um, the intensity as to which I can feel my emotions has now grown, not just the distressing, but also the lovely emotions such as happiness. Like I, if I'm happy and excited, I can be like all the way excited right here. And, you know, that is an amazing feeling to cultivate. So this, although this is the last one, it's probably one of my most favorite ones, um, even though I don't enjoy it all the time. This has definitely been, been the most useful one to have. So as a summary, the three things that has really helped me to peacefully move on and to intuitively create a successful business is by consistently doing these three things, believing in myself more and more each day. And by the way, I still do this. I still want to follow through on what I said I was going to do. It's a lot easier now, by the way. And um, second, I allowed myself to coach myself, went from self-criticism to self-compassion. And, you know, number three is by being able to go from numb 
ex-nurse who just was very robotic into someone who is just alive and feeling because of the ability to feel her emotions. So I hope this helped you. I hope this gave you some ideas. I hope this gave you some clarity and also made you feel that you're not alone because, you know, this was one of the things that I felt as well. And it was really good to hear other people um, who have experienced uh, this as well. And hopefully you um, gained a lot of value out of this. Definitely uh, take these action steps and use them for yourself and let me know how those go, how that goes. So see you soon.